I like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace and safety to the hopefully elect, all the sincere Akim, scattered throughout the four corners, pushing his word in sincerity and in truth. For those who don't know, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world equally calls God, and Yahweh Shai is the name of the only begotten Son, who the world equally calls Jesus Christ. And, um... In this edition of uh, Drop the Mic, I'm going to go into this Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4, uh, dealing with those who uh, made oaths uh, to the Most High, uh, basically uh, made a vow and did not pay, and show you what the uh, the punishment is for uh, basically uh, walking away from this truth and going back into the world. So this is Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4, it says, for us. For it is impossible for those who once was enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. And you know, according to what Jeremiah um, 315 and many more scriptures, uh, Yahweh Shai himself uh, referred to this knowledge as being uh, bread, as being milk, uh, meat, all right, wine, uh, water. So that's the uh, the heavenly gift that those who was enlightened have tasted and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit, made to understand the scriptures, verse 5, and have tasted the good words of the power. And that's what it's referring to, the good words, uh, the words that's written in the Bible, of course. All right. So it says in the powers of the world of the world to come. Verse 6, if they shall fall away, and this is referring to those that, like I said, uh, fall off, fall out of the truth and go back into the world, basically turn their back on, on his uh on Yahweh Shai, man. So it says if they shall fall away to renew them again until repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the son of the power afresh and put him to an open shame. So it's basically uh Bringing shame to Yahweh Shai, man. All right. So reading on verse seven, for the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it, and bringeth forth herbs and meat for them by whom it is dressed, receive blessings from the power. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. All right. So those thorns and briars is those who basically fell out the truth. All right. Who tasted. Uh, the good words of Yahweh, all right, was made to understand the scripture, was made partakers of the Holy Spirit, and fell away. So it says, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. Uh, referring to uh, those Israelites, of course, all right, and it says, and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burnt, to be part of that lake, man. All right, to suffer that judgment, to be part of that body of people that's going to be judged. All right, which is referred to as the lake of fire. All right, so the next precept I want to get is uh, the book of Matthews. The book of Matthews, chapter 12. And verse 43. The book of Matthews, chapter 12, and uh, verse 43. And it reads, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. And the he that's walking through dry places is referring to the unclean spirit. Seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And that house is referring to man. All right, because that's what unclean spirits dwell within man. That's that house. And when he is come and findeth it em empty, swept and garnished, meaning, uh, let's see here. I want to get a precept and show you what that's referring to. That house being empty. Stay in the book of Matthews, uh, Matthew chapter twenty-five and verse twenty-seven. And it says, Thou art therefore to put my money 
to the exchanges because this money is that knowledge, all right? Those same uh, good words, all right, that that uh, that you tasted, all right, that made you full that money, all right? So this word is also referred to as money. And then, and then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. No, uh, it's a lot. Let's see here. Uh, with usury and take therefore the talents from him alright take therefore the talents from him take for the knowledge from him alright the, the good words that, that you tasted alright referring to those uh, who fall away alright so it says take therefore the talents from him and give it unto him which have ten talents alright so that's what is referring to uh, here in uh, Matthew's uh, chapter 12 and uh, let's see verse 44 when it says then he said I will return into my house from whence I came and when he is gone and when he is come he find it empty swept and garnished alright meaning the Lord is going to take uh, what he gave to you away alright so read knowing verse uh, 45 it says then go of he and take it with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, referring to those unclean spirits, and they enter in and dwell there in that house which is man or woman, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Alright, so seven more spirits gonna dwell, unclean spirits gonna dwell with you, and you're gonna be more wicked than you was before you tasted of the good words of your hour. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Referring to you Israelites. You wicked Israelites. Alright. So uh, let's see. <clears throat> let's get another precept. In uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 2 and verse 20. This is 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. And it, and it reads, for if after they have escaped the pollution of, of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So that's what it's referring to when you taste, when you have taste of the um, the good words of Yahweh. All right. That's how you escape um, the pollution and corruption of this world through the knowledge of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says they are again attangled therein and overcome remember um uh those good soldiers all right him that war entangling himself not with the cares of this life all right so it says they are again entangled therein and overcome and the latter end is worse with them than the beginning just like we read in uh matthews man all right with those seven uh more wicked spirits man all right, that's going to dwell in that empty house. All right, so uh, let's see here. Uh, read knowing it says, verse 21, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. So the Lord <clears throat> says, better for you not to even know or taste or eat, all right, of this uh, uh, good of the, of the Lord's bread, of this knowledge. It's better for you not to know it than to know it and to fall away, man. All right. So it says, then after, then after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is returned to his own vomit. All right. So you was never the, the, the uh, chosen, man. All right, you was, he says, many are called, but few are chosen. All right, so it says, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned into his own vomit again. And it's so that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. All right, so uh, let's get another precept in the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, let's see here. Chapter 5, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 4. 
And it says, when thou vowest a vow unto the power, defer not to pay. For he have no pleasure in fools, pay that which thou hast vowed. Alright, so basically, uh, this is this this truth to be chosen by the Lord is basically uh, like you would know in the, in the world, like the mob, man. Okay, once you in, you 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 can't get out, man. There's no, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be in the truth no more. Uh, I'm tired, uh, or whatever. You, you you made a vow to the Lord, all right. Just like you make a vow, uh, a woman might make a vow to her husband, or a husband make a vow uh, to his wife, man. In, in the carnal world. All right, it says to death do us part. All right, and that's what this referring to, man. All right, so it says, when thou vowest a vow unto the power, defer not to pay it, for he have no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou should have not vow, than thou should have vowed and not pay. All right, so you have to keep your word, man. All right. But once you come into this truth, into the knowledge of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, tasted of these good words, and you fall away. Uh, he said, uh, your other end is to be burnt, to be part of that lake, all right? That that body of people that's going to be destroyed, man, all right? So, uh, reading on verse 6, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error, therefore... Should the power be angry at thy voice and destroy the works of thy hands? All right, so that's the uh, basically the judgment, man, for those who make vows to the Lord. All right, and don't keep the uh, word, man. All right, so uh, let's get another precept and prove that that point further. Um, uh, the Book of Numbers. All right, let's see. Go back to the law. Numbers uh, chapter 30, Numbers chapter 30 and verse 1, and it says, And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. All right. So if you make a vow, all right, you come into this thing. Like I said, you know, you got the mob, out the mafia. All right. It's, it's basically, man, uh, you, you you can't just uh, walk away from it, man. You have to pay with your life, man. All right. And that's the same thing with the Lord, man. All right. So it says, if a man vow, vow. Unto the Lord Yahweh, or swear an oath. All right, if you take that oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. All right, and that's the law, man. Let's get another precept in the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 23 and uh, verse 21. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy power, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy, thy power will surely require it of thee, and it will be sin unto thee. We know him, but if thou forbear to vow, it shall be no sin. It shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips, thou shalt keep and perform it, even a free will offering according to as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy power, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. All right? So it's to death uh, do us part, man, concerning the Lord, man. All right? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's get the book of Matthews. The book of Matthews. The book of Matthews, chapter 5, and verse 33. In verse 33, and it says, Again, ye have heard that it have been said by them of old times that thou shalt not forbear thyself, but thou shalt perform unto the Lord thy oath. 
Alright, so if you make an oath to the Lord, you have to pay. Uh, let's get another precept. Uh, one last precept. Um, in the book of Psalms, chapter Psalms chapter 50 and verse uh, 14. And it reads, Offer unto the Lord thy power, thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Point blank, man. All right, so it's death to death do us part, man. Blood in, blood out. With the how about shit got was shot, man. All right? And basically, that's the point. I hope you brothers was edified. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.